Another method that is useful is land typing. So understanding the type of country so that we can recognise through the geodiversity and the biodiversity that belongs, but types of countries. And this is from Hawke's Bay. What I saw there, some incredible steep hill country and there's blanket pines going in where it's questionable you should be planting and cropping on that steep eroding country. But also there's amazing cultural landscapes. In this area near Waimarama where you can see there's old par sites, ancient gardens, it's where Kupe came in and his waka, important legible landscape blanketed with pines, subsidised by government. Because I had a wee tenty about it, they have now done an archaeological study and found there's dozens of sites. So they're pulling out the pines on the archaeological sites. But as the archaeologists said, it's not just about the archaeological site, it's the landscape, it's the legibility of that, it's, it's the relationship between and the views between and the, how you make sense of that place. So it's not just the actual par site or the urupa or whatever, but it's the space. There's some ridiculous plantings going on. It's very upsetting and a lot of landowners have been persuaded without mm. adequate information to go along with this, because it's an easy option. These huge farms, destocking, goodbye farm manager, yeah, and the, just all planted in pines. And I think we're going to regret it big time. Mm. I can understand that we need to be more woody in cover, and I agree with that. We are naturally not only a land of little landscapes, but we're a predominantly forested land. And we've lost most of that. So re-establishing forests is sensible. However, it's what sort of forest the PR seemed to suggest that two thirds of the billion trees were to be native trees. It turns out that it's two thirds of the budget is on native trees. And that's what's happened so far, so that 80% of what's being planted is pines. If we look at the role of these pine trees in carbon sequestration, we've got these pines being cropped around about every 28 years. It's a general sort of cycle. What happens is that they sequester the carbon, but then they're harvested, and it's only a, a single sequestration. And what is interesting in the figures for carbon and pine crop, pine sequestration, is there's no account taken of all of the fuel for all of the management all of that activity is not accounted for. It's not recognising the reality. We've got the emissions on the works to establish them and thin them, and then we've got the harvest, then, you know, and shipped offshore, and then we've got the processing. What's happening to our harvested wood products? The data that's available shows an average half-life of four years. 28 years, cut, shipped offshore, average life, four years. You know, toilet paper, whatever, cardboards, different things. Two and a half years in India. That's not long-term sequestration. It's very short. One of the big problems is that you have to replant but you're not sequestering more, so if we're to get more, each crop, you need to double the area. It doesn't seem to pass the sensibility test. I mentioned about the wilding risk, and we've got the fire risk, focusing on a single species for a massive crop, so the, the potential threat in terms of biosecurity of some 
something going wrong. And then you see these communities cleaned out because there's a contracting gang comes in to do all the pine work and then they go home for 28 years or whatever. And there's no one employed in the local area. It's, it's not a sensible solution socially. So it's a landscape problem, there's all these other problems, a social problem, and instead we need to be having that regeneration, the Hinawai, the native forest solution. And the regeneration is the most practical, achievable, economic way to do it. Here we see destocking and getting that regeneration and then we can get multiple, multiple benefits from that. Multiple species as well as heaps of benefits. Getting long-term forest recovery, we need permanent forests, not this cropping business.